Hi, Phoenix Rising here, and tonight we're going to be taking a look at some slow motion video of lightning that would make Tesla proud. Feel free to stick around if you want to learn a little more about the camera and the settings that I use to film this video. Let's talk about the Sony RX10 Mark III and how to shoot high frame rate video. Hey, Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be talking about doing HFR high frame rate video with the Sony RX10 Mark III. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? Okay, for starters, uh, to access HFR, you have to set your mode dial to HFR. And uh, once you're there, your camera's going to look a little different on the back than what you're used to seeing. And let me clear off the, there you go, clear off the extra stuff from it. Now, if you'll notice, it had the uh, little uh, note saying, hey, press your center display button to go into standby. Right now, if I try and take a video, it'll tell me, uh, when the center button is pressed, the device enters shooting standby, is this, uh, which is displayed, and then you can hit the movie button to start recording. Okay, so that's the gig. So what you have to do is basically, in uh, you get everything the way you want it. You get your ISO set, your uh, exposure compensation, focus, all of that. Uh, F-stop, which I think that's pretty much automatic in HFR. Shutter speed you can't really mess with in HFR because it's determined by your frame rate. We have a 480 frame rate setting selected, so we have to have a shutter speed faster than that, which is 1 500th of a second. Uh, so once you get everything framed, everything in focus, 
Then you press your standby, and what you'll notice is it buffers in the image information for a bit, and it locks down everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now it says preparing, and now it says standby, and the record button starts to film. So looking at that, if I go to try and change the zoom, it tells me invalid, shutter speed, invalid, even getting into the menu, invalid, everything. So you're locked down. It's ready, and what's going on in here is this camera is is looping high-speed video in the camera's internal memory buffer. So that allows you to do a couple things that we'll talk about in the different uh, settings when we go into it. So we're in shooting standby right now, and once I hit the record button, it'll say recording. Now what it's doing is it's actually processing the image in the buffer and writing it to a file, as you can see by our memory card access here. Uh, and this takes time, and you can't, your camera's locked up, you're out of the game, you can't take another video, obviously, or do anything else while this is happening, okay? So, there, that's, uh, now we're back to preparing, back to standby, now we can shoot another video now. There is one thing you can do, is when you hit your record button, you can press your center button, and that'll cancel the processing, it'll save an abbreviated uh, high-speed clip, uh, but you have to make sure it's processed past the point that of, the, of whatever you want to capture, uh, or else you're not going to you're going to lose whatever you did. So that's the way this works from a from a, just a shooting functionality standpoint. Now, when we did the lightning videos, uh, I went ahead and I set the ISO way up to the maximum of 12,800, which gave a very uh, very ugly output. Okay, anybody who's played with a camera knows that uh, you know for good pictures, photo photography, you really want to stay 800, maybe 1600 is pushing it some. Uh, and this is 12,000. So yeah, it's an ugly. It was an ugly video that it took, and I did clean that up in post processing and got rid of about 60% of the noise. Maybe yeah, that might be a good topic for a video someday. Although I'm by far not an expert. I'm far from being an expert in processing video. So let's go into the menus and look at. The, well, whoops! I got to go back out of standby, right? Oops! I think I did, and I'm back in it again. Okay, there we go. So let's go into our menus and look at our HFR settings. Now this is a Sony RX10 Mark III. The RX10 Mark IV has a newer, much improved, as I'm told, menu system. But this is what we have, so this is where we're going to look at your settings. And the settings should be the same if you do have a Mark IV. Okay, HFR settings is on your camera menu, a second one over, a second screen. Uh, press your center button to go in. You have four settings, which are record setting, frame rate, priority setting, and record timing. Uh, if you'll notice, it says 8x slow mo right now, and if and what it's going to tell you and what your slowdown effect is going to be is based on the output record setting, uh, how many frames a second output, and the frame rate you're recording at. Okay, it's simple math here. So let's go in and look at the record setting. Uh, right now, it's 60 frames a second, and it can also do 30 and 24. Now, realistically, um, my opinion is always use 60 frames a second and the reason for that is what I found in use is if I go to 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second for the outputs file it takes it a lot longer to do that recording and processing before you can take another clip and I'm impatient like most people so I leave it on 60 and if I want to slow it down to 16x slowdown I just put it in another video and process that at 30 uh, process that clip down to 30 or down to 24. I'm getting the same thing as I'm getting here, but I'm able to save time and be back in the game to take another video, another clip, faster uh, faster when I'm out in the field. So that's record setting, and, and if I set it to 30, it would say 16x here, okay, uh, which is what we did on the video, and, and it was recorded with these exact settings. Now, next we go down to frame rate. And as you can see, you've got three frame rates. You've got 240, 480, and 960. Now, when we talk about frame rates, you have frame rates, and then you have a quality setting for either high quality or longer record time, okay? And I'm going to give you some numbers, and these are for the quality mode of recording high frame rate video. Uh, the way it works is when you shoot 240, whoops, 240 video, basically you're at, at almost... 1080p resolution, okay? It's actually uh, 1824 by 1026, which uh, for those that don't know, 1920 by 1080 is full high definition uh, 1080p video. Now, when I go down to 480, I'm going to have some quality loss, 
and it's going to go down to 1676 by 566. Now, mind you, when you look at the, the movie this thing produces, it stretches them all to 1080p size, okay? And that's part of why the I wish Sony would let it just output the native resolution and you stretch it, because that takes time, adds time to your processing, okay? But as you can see, the 480 quality is not bad. Now, it's really the lightning clips were not a good judge of the quality and how things look because it was so dark and I had the high ISO and was, you know, worst case situation for doing high speed video. Uh, so the 480 is moderately usable, uh, not super pretty, but, but usable. And then by the time you go to the 960, you're way down to, uh, you're way down to 1136 by 384 resolution. And unless you really, really need to slow things down that fast, it's not very usable, okay? Uh, that's just my take on it. So I generally tend to stick with 480 because that's kind of a, you still have pretty decent quality and it gives you a good slow-mo effect. If you go down to 15 frames a second, that's 30, uh, 32x slow-mo uh, and, and, and 30 frames a second is 16. And that's pretty decent. You can capture most things that way. Okay, so enough of that. And here, priority setting, there's where you go quality or shoot time priority. Like I said, I always choose quality priority unless I absolutely need more than to, to capture more than two seconds of slow-mo video. And it, with the end trigger this thing has, usually that suffices. Uh, another thing when you go to shoot time priority is it jumps your resolution down even farther to the point where your 240 frame per second is actually has the image quality that we shot at 480 and and your uh, your 960 on the qual on the time priority setting or shoot time priority actually drops down to 800 by 270 resolution which that's you'd be hard pressed to make a half waist decent 720p video out of this okay so like I said uh, I don't use shoot time unless I absolutely have to and uh, that's so that's the top three. Let's go into the last one, and this I saved the best for last. And this is your record timing function. Now you have start trigger, end trigger. Just about every camera or thing that I've seen out there where you do uh, do the trigger, uh, they all they all basically default to a start trigger. Okay, which means you have to anticipate what you want to record happening, hit the button, and then hope that it falls within the two to five seconds, depending on the camera model and all that. That uh, before it's done recording and you gotta wait a second, right? Try doing that with fireworks or lightning. It doesn't work so well. I've tried. Uh, so Sony, what they did is they incorporated this end trigger, and that's also part of why you have to go through putting it in standby and it buffering and all that other stuff. Because what end trigger does is it allows you to take and capture something after the event. So in other words, for, for when doing this lightning video, I watched, I kind of held my camera anticipating where there might be something good. And then when the lightning flash happened, I hit the record button and then it backtracked two seconds. And so I was able to capture that. Now, had I had, I, had all I had, if all I had was a start trigger, I could have taken 30 video clips and maybe gotten one or two somewhat if I got really lucky. But it would all be luck of the draw, not based on timing and me being able to kind of control the situation. So there you have it, end trigger. So we'll go back out of here. And that's it. That's, that's, that explains your HFR a little bit on the Sony RX10 Mark III. Your Mark IV has not improved the HFR at all. If you're interested in buying the newest, latest, and greatest, it just gives you a much better menu system and some other really cool things like phase detection uh, focusing, which the Mark III doesn't have. So anyway, Sony RX10 Mark III, and that's the settings and how I tend to set it up and what we use for doing our lightning clip videos. This video was produced by Phoenix Rising. A lot of time and effort went into making it, so if you enjoyed it or found it of value, please like and subscribe to my channel because, hey, it helps keep me motivated. As always, this video is free for personal or educational uses. Just credit the channel. And, hey, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you around.